from the high side to the baseline side and really disturbed the Evansville offense. Jim Cruz not understanding why that pass was made. You can't play the same way all game, the high side. You gotta vary it. Make the passer think, make the offensive player at the post area think. Board up high, boy, they really give him the shot, don't they? Poor guy, and he can make those. Oh, good offensive board, Anthony Peeler. Well, Chris Smack's been in that one-man zone. He did it the first half a lot. Tell you, I wouldn't give Travis Ford that shot all year long, though. Godfrey kicks it back out. Chandler front rims it. Rebound to Coward. Missouri's got some numbers on the break here. Brent Healer. And Chandler got him. Chandler thought he had ball, but he got Peeler. Because it's a tough angle for us, but I'm not so sure Anthony Peeler couldn't have held and delivered an underhand shot while the defender were... He put the ball right up where the defense could get a shot at it. Shreffler will come back in. Chandler sits down. Lee Coward, though, made the right pass. That's the nice thing when you have guys like him. Experience, have been there. Just understand what has to be done. Chandler over there on the Evansville bench, and all that was going on, Lee Coward had his arm around Travis Ford out at half court, encouraging the youngster. What do you think he may have said? Hey, would you stop shooting it? <laughs> Although knowing they've watched him every day, he said, listen, you're going to make those. Take them. Pulls it down. Evansville still right there, though. Seven down, but they got the ball, 419. Move to the post. Oh, that's picked off. Good read by Anthony Peeler. Peeler. Whoa, put a little burst to speed on. Smith's follow won't go. Loose and out of the pack comes Warren. Pretty scrappy sequence. Yep, Smith stayed right on the ball. Sure did. Peeler mad that he missed that one. He would turn the Jets on, though, I and mean, through half court. Great speed and strong to the basket as well. Again, Ford left open. Just can't find the rhythm. The shot show sure looks good going up, though. Mack down on the baseline. Blocked by Warren. Out with the coward. He's got Doug Smith. That was Mack who got back oh. there and got a hand on that. I think he may have got more than a hand. Great hustle, though. Godfrey knocks down a turnaround. The money man, bread and butter. If they're patient, they get the shot they want. 53-48. Evansville just won't go away as far as Missouri is concerned. Chris Mack refuses to go out on Travis Ford. Smith gets immediately doubled by the ever-present Mack. Coward can't oh. hit, that's on the rim. And a push underneath is... Boy, count it. Yep. Boy, the entire Evansville bench making that circular motion. I don't know, but you like... I thought it was a good tip. Peeler was pushed. Take a look. Pretty good reaction. There's underneath the stuff. I see the push all the way under. Ooh. Milt Donald caught. You got to put a body on sweet Anthony Peeler. 14 second half points for Anthony Peeler. Much of the story. 55 48 Missouri. Daddy, smell our flowers. Oh. My sinuses. When sinus trouble strikes, reach for Nasatine. Watch as they... Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. Every year, Volvo and Mercedes spend millions telling you how safe their cars are. This year, Subaru spent $1.49. We squirted dishwashing liquid on the tires of all three cars. And only the Subaru Legacy with full-time four-wheel drive had the traction to handle this test. So if our competition can't look good in soap and water, what happens in mud, snow, and rain? Test drive the exciting 1990 Subaru Legacy. 
She's all ours. about some customers. Ladies night. Great place, guys. Who did your decorating? I love the sound of the rain. And I love the taste of your fresh fruit coffee. Thanks, but it's not fresh fruit. It's new tray cat. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going and going. We're back for the final 250 here. Final first round game of the Maui Classic. Missouri up 55-48. Anthony Peeler having himself one heck of a second half. Dan Gottfried the same. There's the storyline right there. Peeler 14 second half points. Smith also coming alive in the second half. Evansville picked up the shooting and Gottfried has had a solid game. I don't know how much that's made Norm Stewart relax, but uh, I must commend him on that confidence in the first half to put a lot of people in and let them find that zone, that comfort zone. Chandler has come back in the lineup for Evansville. It's out there with Godfrey, Schreffler, Mack, and Brand. Coward, Peeler, Warren, Smith, and Ford. Go to Godfrey with Warren. That's what I would do. Max got him. He didn't look in, though. No, he didn't. Never look. They come back this side. Doug Smith trying to cheat over on Godfrey. Real smart play. Inside, good catch. Oh, Peeler just out race back to the ball. Whoa! Well, that takes a Up the whooping. <laughs> and he knew it was Mack who was behind him, too. <laughs> yes, he did. There's a lot of ways of getting even, and that's the big one. And right now, they got the hidden ball trick. They're going to... He dunked that so hard, the ball disappeared. <laughs> it went right under. Oh, my goodness. Soaring. And right now... And Shreffler throws it off the back of Chandler. That's, that's what a jam will do on occasion. Yeah. It will rattle people. Missouri, a 10-point lead in the ball as we approach the two-minute mark. Missouri and Louisville shaping up as our second semifinal tomorrow. Villanova and North Carolina will be the first. Little clock right now, Michael. It's on their side. Eighteen seconds. On the shot clock, 140 on the game clock. Down to 10. Now they're in their set. They find Peeler. Pretty inside Smith. And almost got a three-point play out of it after taking 38 seconds off the shot clock. Great execution there. Melt the clock. Get into your set. Get something constructive. A pop out by Peeler, and an even better pass to the post. Scott Schreffler picked up the foul just as first. Doug Smith will step to the free throw line. Scott Schreffler will have much better nights. Struggled here. Much better player. Again, the first game is an awfully tough one. Under the lights against a great team like this. But Evansville reacted very well. Didn't shoot particularly well, but reacted well. Very competitive thing about this tournament losers don't have long to think about it they'll all be back out here that's right <laughs> mac looking for three and drops it down first mac with his 16th point and jimmy cruz calls a quick timeout. nine point game that's only three possession and the purple aces have got some guys who can shoot a three we'll be back Today, more people than ever are getting a kick out of this hot shot. Interstate batteries hit the road fast with all the cranking power and reserve energy you need for even the worst curves in the weather. And Interstate has twice as many dealers than any other battery company in America, so you're never left stranded. For an Interstate battery dealer near you... All you got to do is call 1-800-CRANK-IT. Get power that long. 
T-Rex presents the great American torture test. We challenged the bone-numbing cold of northern Alaska and intense city traffic. Traveled coast to coast to the suffocating heat of Death Valley and passed with flying colors. Xerox, because extreme conditions demand extreme protection. Nine-point game, Missouri the lead, 116 to go. Anthony Peeler showing his stuff here. Well, last year against Oklahoma, he had a resounding jam, and this one is a message to Chris Mack that will be enough for the Wolfie emphatically. Send it in, Anthony. Took kind of a medium five from Norm Stewart as he went by, too. <laughs> Here is Peeler, who really did come alive with 16 second half points. They'll be given the quick fouls if they can't get it. Chandler gives it. Peeler will go to the line. Talking with both Ford and Coward. Very solid in the backcourt with those two kids. Two very heady players. And, and you've got to think that at critical times in the game when you want things run, and you've got two leaders in a sense that have been used to running the offense and Ford and Coward. And the Coward's banging and slapping them in the back and giving them a lot of confidence, too. You will not see Travis Ford miss all those open jumpers first real smile we've seen out of Norm during the game. We've seen a lot of them around well, Rich Valley Daly, here. Rich Daly saying, gee, I'm happy you're back. <laughs> I was in that hot seat all the latter part of the year. 22 for Peeler. Missouri and Louisville is going to be an interesting matchup. Schreffler can't hit outside. Godfrey trying to keep it alive. Schreffler off the floor. Had his pocket picked by Peeler. He's got Smith and Coward with him. Took it himself. How was the tip? Uh, that pressure dribble took everybody to the baseline. Lee Coward sneaking in. Godfrey gets two more. 26 for Dan. We come down the final minutes. Travis Ford will go to the free throw line as Mack got him. Chris Mack, the kind of kid, he's on your team. You'll love him. And uh, it gives you everything he has. If you're on the other team, you'd be a little upset. And uh, Jimmy Cruz, nothing to be ashamed of, though. Solid effort, very competitive, much like him. And, and again, Bill, from a, from a coaching angle, you're back out here tomorrow to play. You'll be back out here Sunday to play again. Uh, really no time to, for anybody to get down. I mean, you think of the James Madison kids this afternoon, but you know, they'll have a chance to turn that all around for themselves tomorrow. And, and you don't like to hear it as a coach. It's a learning process, and you're going to get a lot out of playing these great teams. All you think of is the loss, but you better bounce back and get your kids to bounce back. And we mentioned Kansas playing poorly here a couple of years ago, and at the end of the year, they won it all in Kansas City. And all you folks on the East Coast and all across the country you want to stay up and get some more basketball we've got it coming up here on ESPN Hawaii and Alaska Anchorage will be going at it in the Great Alaskan shootout Riley Wallace going north from Honolulu <laughs> gotta talk to him Brand misses the three outside <laughs> Doug Smith another one of those big rebounds and Mac picks up another foul 65-53, this game in the newspaper will uh, not look the same as it played. Evansville really in this ball game until about a minute and a half ago. One thing you, you, know, you said to me this morning, and you watch a Jimmy Cruz coach team, and they will play hard. And mm -hmm. Evansville just has come out and played hard all night long. Smith missing the free throw, but Peeler coming down with the rebound, and Shreffler with the reach-in foul. Second on Shreffler. And again, as Bill mentioned, Scott will have better nights. Doug Smith, another player, will have better nights than tonight. But as you can see, really in the second half, numbers more like you would expect out of this young man. Nine points, eight rebounds. 
Now, what he did, Michael, too, was he was active on the offensive end of the second half. He didn't stand still, did things like that. Nine and nine now in the second half. Just into the game. And a reach by Brand. He grabs Ford going by with 20 seconds to play. And a big smile on Lee Coward here. He said, now you got it. You made that shot. I know it didn't count. <laughs> It'll put Ford at the line. He has three points, all of them here in the second half. Sixty-six fifty-three. Jimmy Cruz looks on, but he's got himself a good club here, and in the Midwestern Collegiate Conference will be a factor again this year. They pick him second in the preseason in yep. the league. Great 25 and 6 season last year. Godfrey's going to give him some great minutes. Mack can play. You know, Schreffler is better than we've seen tonight. Here's Mack outside. No, no. Coward's alley oop. Peeler wanted to go up and get it. Gets bumped, but the tap is there. And Norm Stewart and Missouri are going to move on. Great to see this guy back on the bench. And he opens with a big W here tonight in Maui. For my partner, Bill Raffi, I'm Mike Gorman, 68-53, the final score. Let's go back to the studios right now. Chris Powell. All right, thanks, fellas. So Missouri winning ugly. They don't shoot that well. They don't play great defense. Your bank for life. By Pepsi, the taste that's generations ahead. By King's Electronics and Appliances. Nobody beats King's deal and by Keister's, your hardware store, and more. This is the 25th anniversary of the SIU Arena in Carbondale, and so far, the host Salukis are plenty tough. They're 5-0, and, oh, and tonight will try for their sixth straight win when they host their longtime and fierce rival, the Evansville Aces. Hello, everybody. I'm Mike Blake, along with Dean Webster. Welcome. Dean, every time we step into this arena, it heats up in intensity. Very important game for Evansville. Why? That's right. There's always some great games here. Very important for the Aces. They played a tough schedule. They're three and four. They're trying desperately to get back to the 500 mark. Probably a more important game for the Aces than for the Salukis. Of course, SIU undefeated, and they're having things uh, really going well for them right now. We talked to Coach Rick Heron before the game. Rich Heron, what's the thing that's made the Salukis particularly tough this season? Well, the two things he wants to do tonight is he's got to attack the Aces zone defense. And, and this is like Bob Knight playing zone. When, when the University of Evansville plays zone. It's the first time Jim Cruz has ever played zone. It's a matchup zone is what Heron calls it, and it's basically man-to-man -man principles, but they set up in a zone. Southern Illinois has not seen a zone. They have to attack it tonight and put pressure on the Aces offensively. On the other end, defensively, Southern Illinois has been very good, but so have the Aces. That's right. The Aces have been shooting well, but they're going to have to worry tonight about the offensive rebounding of Southern Illinois. Twice this year, Southern Illinois has had over 30 offensive rebounds in a game. They crashed the boards with four and sometimes five guys. A big concern for Jim Cruz tonight. Two of the biggest concerns, the players, Jerry Jones for SIU. He's a big one. And Dan Godfrey leading the Aces. We're coming back for the introduction of the starting lineups right after this. Now the Velveteen Rabbit invites you and your family to win a fabulous trip to Hawaii, an exciting London visit, a cruise in the Caribbean, or a $500 shopping trip to Target. Plus, every store will give away one big lovable surprise. Details at your local Target. Attention Tri-State Area Shoppers. McDonald's 12 Days of Pizza offer with two large pepperoni pizzas for $12 or two large sausage pizzas for $12 ends December 14th. So hurry to McDonald's.
This fantasy is brought to you by Unical. Since 1951, we fueled more NASCAR winners than all other brands combined, and we put that same winning spirit into gasolines for your car. And that was a fine piece of driving. All oh, but nothing. What's that, Murph? Nothing, not, nothing, it. There's nothing. to those of you watching the game tonight in the tri-state area. We welcome basketball fans throughout America, New England, Southern California, and also the great state of Ohio along the Sports Channel Cable Network of America. As you come into SIU Arena, this is the 71st meeting. Last year, the team split a two-point ball game at both SIU and at Roberts Stadium. Because of the defense, Dean, I would think tonight again would be a close ball game. You would think. That's right. The 70-point uh, the matchup uh, was kind of a telltale sign for the Aces last year. Every time they scored more than 70, they typically won. And when they scored less than 70 points, they had a hard time. This year, it's a little different team, and that number is a little bit different. The Aces haven't been scoring as many points, where Southern Illinois has really been running up the points. So tonight, it could be on the defensive end is where the game is decided. We talked about the two big leaders on this team. Rich Heron is really pleased with the play of Jerry Jones. He is very, a very much improved player. He's got a couple of kids over there that have really come on for him. And I think as we talked to Rich Heron this afternoon, he was even a little surprised at how well some of the kid, his kids were playing. They've really improved a lot and really worked hard in the offseason. And, uh, boy, he's got them going very well right now. The Salukis coming in here 5-0. and oh, And it looks like we have a pretty good crowd on hand tonight. Rich Heron said the Salukis are coming off his most exciting win as a coach, and that's really saying something in his 29 years as a coach, a triple overtime win down at Murray, Kentucky. The racers win 92% of the time down there, but they didn't win Saturday, 114 to 108. The Aces, on the other hand, good win, 89 to 72 over Toledo, but that was at home. They still have to prove themselves on the road. They haven't won on the road yet this year, and that's something the, the Aces in the past have, uh, have proven themselves, and once they finally got in that road win, they played very well the rest of the season. Uh, haven't got that road victory yet. Of course, they played the three games in Maui and did win a game out there against Chaminade. We're ready for the introduction of the starting lineups. For that, we go to the floor announcer here at SIU Arena, Brian Baggett. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the SIU Arena for Saluki Basketball. Tonight, Southern Illinois University hosts the Aces from the University of Evansville. Now, let's meet the starting lineups for both teams. First, for Evansville, at forward, a 6'5 sophomore from Cincinnati, Ohio, number 34, Chris Mack. For the Salukis, at forward, a 6'8 junior from Central Illinois, number 40, Rick Shipley. At the other forward for the Aces, a 6'9 junior from Lafayette, Indiana, number 33, Mark Jewell. For SIU at forward, a 6'6 senior from Country Club Hills, Illinois, number 44, Jerry Jones. At center for Evansville, 6'9 and a half, a senior from Stillman Valley, Illinois, number 53, Dan Gottfried. For the Salukis at center, a 6'10 junior from Hoopston, Illinois, number 55, David Bush. At guard for the Aces, a 6'4 freshman from Columbus, Ohio, number 5, Shaka Chandler. For SIU at guard, a 6'1 junior from Maywood, Illinois, number 11, Sterling Mahan. Also in the backcourt for Evansville, a 6'1 sophomore from Marion, Illinois, number 20, Scott Schreffler. And for the Salukis at guard, a 6'5 senior from Birmingham, Alabama, number 23, Freddie McSwain. The University of Evansville is coached by Jim Cruz in his fifth season. The Salukis are coached by Rich Heron, also in his fifth season. He is assisted by Ron Smith and Sam Weaver and Rodney Watson. 
Tonight's Booster Club guest coach is Bill Hinchcliffe. Tonight's officials are Jim Bain, Bill Westbrooks, and Mark Messeru from the Missouri Valley Country. And there you see the three officials on your left. Jim Bain, Bill Westbrooks in the middle, and Mark Macero, all three representing the Missouri Valley. Speaking of the Valley, the Salukis last year tied for fourth with a record of six and eight, but they had their first 20-win season in several years, and already they're on their way to what looks like another 20-win season, certainly a very good chance of it under Rich Hare. The Aces, 25 and six last year, and of course, won the MCC. As they come to the center of the floor, Jerry Jones in white. It'll be Dan Godfrey jumping for the Purple Aces. Both these teams had great seasons last year. The Aces won at home. The Salukis won at home. They will only meet one time this year. And Rick Shipley puts it back to Sterling Mayhem. Southern has been outscoring their opponents by 17 points. Both teams shot very well in their last ball game. Both shooting well over 50%. Bush puts it up. Short and a rebound by Chris Mack. Southern Illinois people are on their feet. That's typical here until the Salukis will score. Dan Godfrey turns it over. Traveling call, it'll go back to Southern Illinois. In the man that time by the Salukis. They're going to try to pressure the Aces offense out on the floor a little bit. That time, Aces looked like they had good ball movement. Again, Jim Cruz being a, one of the former assistants of Bob Knight, it's very rare to see the Aces playing a zone, but they feel they have to to keep this team and keep them on the floor. They had more people in, in suits than uniforms the other night. Well, they've got nine over there. Uh, well, actually, ten in uniform. One will not play. He's a soccer player helping the basketball team out. And, uh, and cannot play because of scholarship reasons, but uh, he practices. Shane Barrett practices with the Aces. So the Salukis will bring it in. This is McSwain. An air ball rebounded by Godfrey. Mack being worked on. Down, they try to go to Godfrey. It hits underneath the goal post, out of bounds, and Evansville will retain it. We are still looking for the first points of the ball game. No score. Into Godfrey, good position, no good, and a rebound brought down by Jerry Jones. Jones really goes after the boards hard, both offensively and defensively. He had 16 rebounds against Murray the other night. Mahan, and so far they're all firing blanks. No score as the Aces bring it across. Jim Cruz stood up and pointed to his head. He said, let's get a good shot this time. Mark Jewell puts it in with the first basket of the game, 2-0 Evansville. Took about a minute and a half to get that one. We're finally get going here. Both teams look a little tight in the early going. Southern Illinois taking some long three-point shots. Shipley in and out, rebound and a foul on Dan, on Dan Godfrey. So the big guy for Evansville commits the first personal of the game. And Southern, Shipley will bring it in. Southern Illinois still shooting blanks, Mike. 0 for 4. And already a uh, little, little shoving inside. Chris Mack, 34, for the University of Evansville. And Freddie McSwain, number 23. McSwain, the leading scorer for Southern Illinois. I would think these people would want to sit down, Dean. <laughs> well, until Southern Illinois scores, they won't. McSwain. And we are tied at 2. 2-2. Two, two. Scott Schreffler coming off a fine performance the other night. Draws a charge. A foul on Schreffler. So the Aces with their third turnover. And second team foul. Still 2-2 in the early going. Both teams trying to get unwound a little bit. The Saluki seem, seem content to fire it up from outside right now and crash the boards. Here's Bush. Short, Shreffler with the ball. 
Scott Schreppler, well-known in the Southern Illinois area, former standout, a former Southern Illinois High School Player of the Year. Schreffler just got blasted by Mahan and McSwain. He's on the drive, post up, no good, and a strong rebound by Jerry Jones. I think every time there's a rebound, you can just yell Jerry Jones, and you're probably going to be right most of the time tonight. He is averaging 12 rebounds a game. Here he is with the ball, back out. McSwain can't handle it. Bush again. And Southern with its first lead, 4-2. to two. Dave Bush, 6'10", junior out of Hoopston, Illinois. Mack being guarded by Shipley, takes it down, up. Gets it back, and he'll bring it out. Here's Chaka Chandler. And it's run down by Shipley. Letting him play here in the early going. Man momentarily loses it, but Jones gets it and a foul. A foul on Chandler, and the basket's good by Jerry Jones. Jones very alertly. That was kind of a wild pass in there. Third team foul. And Jones, a senior out of Country Club Hills, Illinois, played at Hillcrest High School, steps to the line. He is one big guy. You are right. They listen to him at 2.30. <laughs> Every bit of it. He could play some football somewhere. Very physical, aggressive. He was on MVC All Newcomer. Here's the pressure as the Salukis open it to a 7-2 lead. Chandler goes down to Godfrey. And Dan Godfrey asserts himself with his first basket. Godfrey pretty much said, here I am, guys. Come and get me in a very strong move and a good slam by Godfrey. Seven fours, Southern Illinois. Godfrey is being looked at by some NBA teams. There's some scouts that have been to see. Shipley steps outside, and they give him three. Rick Shipley. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think you'd want to get into a track meet with Southern if you're Evansville. No way. Too many good athletes. A lot of depth on this team. They've got several guys over there on the bench that can that can fill it up and can play. And a foul underneath on Dave Bush. That's the first team foul. And Chris Mack will bring it in as Bill Westbrook signals the foul. And we're going to take a timeout. 15:41 to go in the first half. The score: Southern Illinois 10, Evansville 4. You don't expect your bank to make mistakes on your checking accounts. The real difference in banks is how they respond when they do. At Old National, we don't like mistakes. So if we ever slip up on your account, we'll put our money where our mouth is and pay you for it in hard cash. Guaranteed. Right, Kathy? Right. Check where quality service from qualified people is our way of life. Guaranteed. Your bank for life. Old National. None of us want to think about it, but the truth is you could outlive your husband or wife. If that were to happen, are you prepared? How would you cope with the changes this loss would bring? Are there things you and your spouse can learn from people who've gone through this experience? Don't miss a special report, Suddenly Single, coming up tomorrow on Newswatch at 5. Find out what you need to know. That's Newswatch at 5 tomorrow, only on WFIE-TV Channel 14. Dan Gottfried, uh, pretty simple what he was going to do. Well, that's why Gottfried is being looked at by some NBA scouts. It's 6'9", 240. Gottfried is a load and moves pretty well, and I think what maybe really attracts uh, the, the scouts to him is he's a very good outside shooter. In fact, he's taken a couple of three-pointers uh, in the first early part of the season, and he hadn't done that before, and the Aces just out of necessity needed to someone to shoot from the outside and Godfrey being the good shooter has extended his range a little bit back to inbound it looking for some help and Schreffler loses it ahead to McSwain up he goes and blows the jam Schreffler did a good time of annoying McSwain that time Jim Cruz says you've got to be in position to catch the ball before you can put up the good shot 
The Aces have been passing up good shots and taking bad shots, according to their mentor. But that's another good shot by Dan Gottfried. He's got four points, and it's a 10-6 Southern Illinois lead. Shooting-wise, the Aces are not shooting well overall. No, the Aces have only hit, that was their third bucket. They were two of six as a timeout. That's just 33%. Both teams do a good job of holding the other team's field goal percentage down. Right now, I guess Southern Illinois is winning that and winning on the scoreboard. No team has shot better than 40% against the Aces so far. That includes Missouri and James Madison in the Maui Classic. But the Aces, unfortunately, didn't shoot any better. Gottfried tries to get it. Bush gets it instead, and here comes McSwain. Shipley. Mahan. And gets the roll. A three-point shot. Sterling Mahan out of Maywood. He was a spark plug off the bench last year, but he's a starter, and he's been contributing. Here's Jewell. And a pretty three-point shot by Mark Jewell. That is Mark Jewell's first three-pointer of the season. 13-9, as you see. Southern maintaining a four-point lead. Mahan in traffic, dishes it out. This is McSwain for three. And that's exactly what Jim Cruz was afraid of, that there would be penetration in the zone. And that time, Mahan made the good move down the lane and then dished it out. Into Gottfried and a foul on Dave Bush. And that's two on the junior. Well, there's no way Bush is going to be able to handle Godfrey, but, you know, really the uh, Southern Illinois has done a very good job defensing the post. They've only allowed 41 points out of starting centers, and if the Aces don't get uh, some production out of Dan Godfrey tonight, it's going to be a long night for the Aces, but so far, Godfrey has gotten the ball inside and picked up a couple of fouls and scored four points. Number four, Tyrone Bell in for the Salukis as it's knocked away by Rick Shipley, and number 50, Ashraf Amaya, who hails from Walter Luthen High School out of Chicago in Oak Park. Milt Donald, number 22, in for the Aces. Aces still trail by seven, Treffler. Scotty Treffler, he's really been trying to shake some shooting woes and didn't show any signs of ill effects on the shooting end that time. A three-pointer for Scott Treffler, and it's 16-12, Southern Illinois. Bell gets it back to McSwain, tries to get it in, and a... Three jo yeah, Jones uh, was working there on the block, and he backed in, got good position, but they just didn't get him the ball in time, and they got called for three seconds. Had the ball had been delivered a little sooner, it would have been a good play. Mack fans it out. Both teams playing at a very fierce defensive pace. Treffler back out to Milt Donald. Into Gottfried. In and out, and a big rebound by Jerry Jones. Ball's knocked away. Here's McSwain for three. Rebound, Milt Donald. McSwain really can't find the handle right now. He can't get that shot off. He's getting it off, but he's just not finding his range. Here's Gottfried. A foul in the basket. A foul on Freddie McSwain, and Gottfried, with his third basket, can cut the lead to one if he converts the free throw. It's 16-14. There's where the offense, when you're not doing well on offense, it carries over into your defensive end a little bit. McSwain not shooting well on the offensive end. Well, now it starts to creep in, and he doesn't rotate well on the defensive end, and he gets called for a foul. But if he's down there and he's ready for that lob pass in there, he makes Godfrey shoot a little four- or five-foot jump shot, a little banker off the glass instead of he's got a lay-in, and then he gets down there late, and he fouls him instead of maybe giving up two. You get a foul and a chance at a three-point play. So McSwain goes out as Godfrey hits his seventh point. And the Aces are back within one, 16-15. You see Mahan trying to back into that zone. That's where the they want to try to go right into the teeth of it, right at the point. Blocked 
by Chandler, by, Mc, by Donald, but controlled and a traveling call on Sterling Mayhap. Not a popular call here in Carbondale. As you see some of the faithful here. And a timeout. 11.54 remaining, and there you see it. The Salukis by one point. We'll be back right after this. When you're really hungry for seafood, most places make you wait and wait and wait. But if you want great seafood in just minutes, there's only one place to go. Captain D's. For fish dinners prepared with our original batter or our country-style cornmeal breading or baked our own special way, each for only $3.99. Captain D's, what a great little seafood place. Holiday Markdown Madness continues at King's Electronics and Appliances. Incredible savings on a family size no frost GE refrigerator, only $4.27. $4.27. How about this Markdown Madness deal? A heavy duty large capacity GE washer and dryer, only $4.88 for both. King's is slash prices to the bone on microwaves. Special bonus micro magic food free with every microwave purchase. We want your holiday business and we've got the markdowns to prove it. Don't miss King's Circular in your newspaper featuring more Holiday Madness savings. Nobody beats King's deal. And as the Southern Illinois cheerleaders leave the floor, they've had things pretty much their way, but the Aces of Evansville start to pick it up. A little better shooting by Evansville in the last few moments. Yeah, the Aces at the first time out, they, they were only shooting 33%. Now they're starting to pick it up. They're up over 55% now. The Aces, 6 for 11. Southern Illinois, 42%, so their percentage is dropping a little bit, and it's closed on the scoreboard. The Aces trailing Southern Illinois by one. Leading scorers so far, Dan Godfrey with seven points for Evansville. Freddie McSwain leads Southern, leads the Salukis with five points. As expected, both players leading their team, and both players getting out to starts on the point scoreboard. So Evansville with a chance, and Shipley just decked McDonald. Bill Donald went down. And five-second call. Jim Cruz upset. He's pertaining to the play right before. That was a set play to try to pick up a foul coming out of that, and uh, I think the Aces were pretty upset they didn't get a call there. The officials are letting him play a little bit, though. Mayhan from a long distance. He has two baskets and both of them three points, and Southern Illinois goes back on top by four, 19-15. Trepler needs help and gets it from Mill Donald. Donald just hit Mahan with a uh, nice little forearm. And traveling call on Mark Jewell. Really getting physical out there, Mike. Six turnover, so the pressure may be starting to affect Evansville a little bit. Still a lot of time in the first half. 11 minutes. And a foul on Dan Godfrey, and that is number two. Evansville can ill afford to lose the 6'10 senior, 6'9 out of Stillman Valley. He's been playing extremely well. By the way, Gottfried has already passed with his seven points as we get some new people. He's now the 17th all-time scorer, passed the great Gus Derner. UE's first All-America. He's passed him on the all-time scoring list with more than 1,200 points as Jerry Jones puts it in. 21-15, Southern Illinois. And the Aces turn it over again. We have yet to see Brian Hill, the Evansville second leading scorer. He's the sixth man, but at the 10-49 mark of the first half, we still haven't seen him in the action yet. Nick Swain for three. Brought back by Kelvin Lawrence. Here's Mahan for three, and it's bombs away at SIU Arena. He's three for three from the long distance range, and it's 24-15, Southern Illinois with its biggest lead. Chaka, block, Chandler block. Here comes McSwain. Dishes it off. Lawrence and a jam by Jones. No basket. That's offensive interference. He was in the cylinder. 
No question about it. Mark Massari right there for the call. And here comes Brian Hill. We're going to take another look at it. It's an unpopular call, but uh, I think it's probably going to be a pretty good one. The ball comes out. It's hard to tell there. But Jones was all over it. Back to live action. Evansville still down by nine. Mack on the drive and a foul. Mack got the lead on Kelvin Lawrence. That's his first personal and a fourth team foul. So the Aces are still not in the bonus. And the jam pretty to Brian Hill on a nice assist from Chaka Chandler. Brian very smart under control that time instead of uh, trying to slam it just kind of put it back in over his head nice nice delivery that time 24 17 just under 10 minutes remaining Southern Illinois with the ball and the lead the Hill, Hill plays the point of that zone now and Mack goes down to the block and Dan Godfrey with the rebound Southern Illinois thinks they're going to make a run at the Missouri Valley and they're certainly giving every indication of being capable of doing that they are 5-0 into Gottfried, and he puts it in. Gottfried, when he gets it in that area, is just point blank. I mean, he's going for one thing. He goes for the slam dunk. Mike, I don't know if I'm going to get my hand in the way of that. So Southern Illinois' lead cuts a five. No way. We've got some strong guys out there in the middle in Jones and Gottfried. Gottfried's averaging better than 18 points. He's well on his way to that. Mahan again. Look good, but it doesn't go in. And Mack with a rebound. So here come the Evansville Aces to Hill. Knocked away. It'll be retained by Evansville. Great defense that time by Sterling Mahan. Mahan really hustling back after he saw the ball get past him. And Hill was trying to make a good move. But Mahan back there for one thing, and that's to stop the break and did his job without committing the foul. Ashraf back in. And Mahan. Jones is out of there now. Hill has to put it up. Doesn't get the roll. Stolen by Chris Mack. The ever-present Chris Mack. Chaka Chandler turns it over. Mack is one of those players coaches really love to have, Mikey. Very heady. He's always thinking one step ahead. That time he knew the outlet pass the whole first half had been going to that spot. He just stood and waited for the pass to be delivered and then stepped in and took it. Jim Cruz upset with a call. Chaka Chandler with a little shuffle step there got called for the travel. Bush gets Mack off his feet and travels. A lot of traveling so far. The officials have been busy. Ironically, they've let him play except for that type of call. Yeah, you're right. That'll drive coaches nuts, you know, uh, as... Eric Griffin, another thoroughbred, comes in. Talk about two different styles of coaches. Rich Heron just sitting over there on the bench, kind of laid back. Jim Cruz standing up, shouting instructions to his players. Of course, he's a 56-year-old compared to a 35-year-old. McSwain with the steal and a foul on Chris Mack. McSwain complaining he wanted the foul earlier. Down here when Schreffler shoved him after the loose ball, McSwain did a great job of stealing that pass, Mike. And he can add to that five-point lead. Freddie McSwain transferred from Northern Oklahoma College, came here to Southern Illinois. He's a native of Birmingham, Alabama. And like all, you know, when we talk about Southern Illinois, we hear the, the words, good athlete or a great athlete, and this kid can really sky. Oh, yeah, he's a great athlete. He gave the Aces fits last year, and uh, that was really a concern of the coaching staff for the Evansville was how to stop this guy, and so far uh, they haven't really done that great a job. He's really gotten loose and starting to warm up a little bit, though uh, his shot from out's not been going, so now he's starting to attack the inside a little bit. Seven points for McSwain and a seven-point lead for Southern Illinois. We're coming down to the eight-minute mark. Chandler, run down by Sterling Mahan. And the Salukis now will set up shot. 
Southern Illinois will host St. Louis on Friday night. Then they head over to where the Aces were about a month ago, over to Hawaii. They'll be they'll spend the holidays in Hawaii. The Aces have to get ready for Murray State on Saturday. And then Michigan State a week from tomorrow night at Roberts Stadium in Evansville. Shot clock at 10. Man, fans it out to McSwain. Hill turns it in. A rebound by Brian Hill. So Evansville again will try to cut down its lead. They get it to Godfrey. A block. A block by Omaha. Mahan penetrates. That's got to be an offensive foul. Mahan just jumped all over Chandler. But the foul is on Chaka Chandler. Hey, we'll give it to Chandler. And it's his second. Like Chandler was just trying to get out of the way that time. He, whenever you're moving like that, there's contact made. Typically, it is going to go on the defensive man, but I thought the official was going to point at Mahan that time. Boy, Sterling Mahan, he could play some football, Mike. What a physique. Mahan is out of the same high school that produced Isaiah Thomas in the Chicago area, Maywood, Illinois, St. Joseph's High School. He really improved his shooting last season. That's why he's starting this year. And Mr. Jones comes back in as Ashraf Amaya goes out. He's a freshman also. So the, the pantry's anything but bare for Rich Heron's Southern Illinois Salukis as they open up a eight-point lead. What a delightful coach to talk to uh, Rich Heron. Talk to him this afternoon. Very personable, very likable in uh, Southern Illinois. He is a legend. And they're going to take a timeout. There you see it. We're coming back to SIU where Southern Illinois leads 27 over Evansville 19. We'll be right back. It's the Nifico. Magnifico. Classical. Fantastical. Stupendo. Attacko. Ho, 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 Get it to stay, get it to go. But only after four o'clock. Pizza, pizza, a pizza won't be labor. Attention Tri-State Area Shoppers. McDonald's 12 Days of Pizza offer with two large pepperoni pizzas for $12 or two large sausage pizzas for $12 ends December 14th. So hurry to McDonald's. This is what I want for Christmas. Oh, I'll still get some socks and a tie, but this is what I really want. A gift certificate from Keister's. Keister's gift certificates come gift box with a handy key light and free key, all ready to wrap and give. And think of what you're giving. Keister's huge selection of toys and tools, appliances, and electronics. Hey, I'm no Christmas shopping expert, but with Keister's handy, I don't have to be. Keister's the hardware store and more. As you look in on the Southern Illinois Salukis, give them 28 points. It was 27 as the clock showed you, but it is 28. Give Mahan another free throw. Dean, statistically, uh, it's certainly going up. It's going SIU's way. Shooting percentage-wise, the Aces are back down now a little bit. They got it up over to 50%. Now they're down under 50 at 47. And Southern Illinois is just getting off a lot of shots, and it really doesn't matter what their percentage is. When you get off uh, more shots than the other team, you can afford to miss a few more. Right now they're 9 of 22, only shooting 41%. But they have five more shots than the Aces. Mc, uh, Mahan leading the way with 11 points. Gottfried has nine for the Purple Aces. Among the people we'll be talking to at halftime, the former All-Pro quarterback and All-Missouri Valley quarterback from Southern Illinois and the St. Louis Cardinals, Jim Hart. He's the athletic director here at Southern Illinois. He'll be part of our halftime. But a lot of minutes in action remains before they take a break. Treffler puts it up for Evansville. Batted around, Hill retreats it. Gets it into Godfrey, can't hand on to it. And a, they still let it go. Down goes Hill and retrieved by Schreffler. All right, five guys on the floor. Hill puts it up and still doesn't get it, and a foul inside on Rick Shipley. All right. Let's get rid of the gym shoes and the gym court. Let's just go out to the football field and play. This is good stuff. So Brian Hill, the Baltimore native, will go to the line for the first time. Evansville got the shot they wanted coming out of the timeout. They got it to Schreffler. Schreffler, who had been struggling with his shooting under 30%, had uh, started to pick it up the last couple of games and hit his first one tonight. 
you know, you mentioned earlier about Hill. He doesn't stray too far from the basket. He's come in shooting an incredible 69% oh. from the field. He can definitely shoot it when he's about three feet from the bucket. That's where he does a lot of his shooting. When he's looking down, 28-21 Southern Illinois, 6.23 to go. Mike Blake along with Dean Webster. Hill with the steal. And almost in our lap. Brian Hill, five seconds after we caught him <laughs> running into our, our table here, laid it in on the offensive end. Credit Hill. And a rebound by Mark Jewell. We've got to do some adjusting over yes. here. We've got uh, some beverages on the, on the table. Here's Schreffler for three. And Scott Schreffler. Showing the form that made him last year one of the top three-point shooters in America at 50%. Has his second three-pointer, and Evansville is back within two with five and a half minutes to go, 28-26. Seven straight points by the Aces coming out of the timeout. About a minute and a half, U of E turned, the, uh, turned things around. Shipley. What a pretty move by Shipley that time. And a technical foul on Jim Crew. And there they are livid. Judging, we have seen Jim much more volatile. Uh, Jim Crew he, said that his goal every every season, his goal is not to get a technical. Well, he made it to the uh, the eighth game of the year, and technicals are nothing new to Rich Heron on the other end. Uh, he missed the. He second wants, half of the second overtime and the third overtime Saturday night at Murray State. Shipley does not convert. Jim Bain will. He had asked Jim Bain to come over. As Shipley goes back to the line, it is still a four point Southern Illinois lead. And this is almost like uh, asking asking someone to go out with you when you're in junior high. Jim Bain goes over and talks to one of the, the official that called it. And then uh, he goes over and talks to Scott Schreffler, the Aces captain. And then he goes over and talks to Jim Cruz and tells him what he says. And then he brings the message back. And bringing it in right in front of us as Jim Cruz heats things up. And they called another one on him. Jim Cruz had better be careful. He's very close to getting a third. And Jim Bain put his whistle in his mouth, I believe, to give him his third one. So two more free throws will be coming Southern Illinois' way, and we have got some fireworks going now in SIU Arena. Some of the greatest games in the Evansville SIU rivalry have been played in this arena. They've had many great games in the 70 previous meetings, and Shipley can't convert either. So it remains 31-26, and once again, Mr. Bush will bring it in at midcourt. Shipley's a 76% free throw shooter. So Jim Cruz has to be careful, and so do the Aces. You've got to be, you've got to be proud of the way they're sticking around. The Evansville fans as Amaya puts it in. Amaya's Amaya. really a leaper in there, Mike, and he just went right up over Godfrey that time. Mac momentarily loses it. Treppler takes it down. A lot of pushing and shoving going on out there, and I think Mac's going to get called for a foul. Mayhan was really hounding Mack inside, and Chris maybe showing a little frustration, threw an elbow and got caught for it. So the Aces may be getting a little frustrated at the physical play by SIU right now. Chris Mack, the spirited sophomore out of Cincinnati St. X, St. Xavier. Is one of the more emotional Aces this year. I think we've had another, I think we've had a technical foul now on Chris Mack. 
And if it would, it would be the second game in a row that Chris has picked up a technical. Mack got a technical foul on uh, Saturday night against Toledo. So Chris reaches his boiling point. This comes at 427. As Jim Bain and Jim Cruz continue to talk, this time they're going to put Mayan at the line. But Evansville has stayed within reach, Dean. This may be the, uh, the final free throw shot here from the other end from the uh, Mac foul. And uh, if Mahan hits it, they'll probably just leave him there instead of bringing Shipley back. Mahan who leads the Southern Illinois with now 12 points. Makes it an eight point lead, 34 to 26. That is six straight, seven straight points now. Seven unanswered by Southern Illinois, and you can't blame the UE players. They've had a hard time getting the ball in the offensive end because of just all the technicals that have been called in the last minute and a half. Now these will be the technicals. So Mahan on a roll right now. That is his 11th point. Make that his uh, 14th, rather. He has had a big first half. 36-26, and they go up on top by 11. Southern Illinois over Evansville by 11, 4.27 to go. And the Aces bench says, let's, let's get back in the ball game, guys. And the Southern Illinois faithful have to love it here as their Salukis trying for their sixth win without a loss. Evansville trying to square its record at four and four. The last four and a half minutes of this first half could be very interesting. Godfrey playing with two fouls. And a rebound by Mack. I can't. And this is Hill. This will be a jab. And Brian Hill on the breakaway has his eighth point. And it's 37-28 as we come down to the four-minute mark. Southern Illinois with the ball and the lead. Shipley. Rebound, Jewel. And knocked away by Freddie McSwain. And the SIU arena is rocking. Timeout, 3.50 to go in the first half. Southern Illinois, 37. Evansville, 28. At Old National, we don't make promises, we make guarantees. The best mortgage options around, guaranteed. Just ask us. Branches where managers make their own decisions, guaranteed. Moneymaker CDs with superior rates and absolute safety, guaranteed. Credit cards with guaranteed convenience, right here. It's people like these who make it easy for us to provide guaranteed banking. That's why Old National is your bank for life. Well, come on in to Jerry's and drink with family. Jerry's family rests the supper for Frank and me. Jerry sets the supper table here at Country Harvest Time with family-style feasts low as 439. If you love country ham, Jerry's is the place to go. Jerry's serves the finest. Clifty Farm, don't you know? Jerry's Country Harvest Suppers. Take my word for it. They're good. And no one brings more to the table than Jerry's. Two of the enthusiastic students here on the campus of Southern Illinois University in Carbondale. And that's the story why they're a very happy bunch. Southern Illinois leading Evansville, 37-28. The Purple Aces, on the other hand, have trailed several games at halftime. But again, Dean, if you're Jim Cruz, I think you've got to be happy that this could have been a lot worse uh, with, the, with the three technicals. Well, with three and technicals, yeah, you're right. And uh, all the free throws and... And there was uh, the offensive foul down here on Max. So uh, Southern Illinois really haven't had a chance to break it open even more than they have. It's a nine-point lead. It was 11. 
So Sterling Mahan with a basketball. He's had a great first half. He certainly has. He's lived up to his billing. Here's the jump down to Jones, or to Amaya, and the putback by Jones. Jones with his seventh point, and it's 39-28 Southern Illinois. Amaya just stood wide open underneath the bucket, waiting for somebody to throw it to him. Mack takes it up, doesn't get it. Jones with a rebound, up to Mahan, three on two, down low, up and in, and a foul on Mark Jewell. Jewell had little choice that time, but to either let him get the bucket or foul, and he committed the foul. Jim Cruz said he was concerned about SIU's transition game, and his fears are becoming reality. <laughs> He's a smart coach. He knew the concern was well warranted. Chris Mack comes out. There's just some great athletes on the floor for Southern Illinois. I mean, these guys just get it and go, Mike. And Amaya at the line. Ashroff misses his first free throw attempt. He is just a freshman, 6'7", as you can see, good size. Southern Illinois now 10 of 15 from the free throw line here in the first half, so they've had plenty of chances. Down to three minutes, Evansville still trailing by 11. Scott Schreffler in and out, rebound Jones, and Jones on again with a rebound. He's got at least a half dozen here in the first half. Jones again, and a foul, and a basket. And Jerry Jones with his ninth point. Jim Cruz said that when Southern Illinois gets the ball inside, they will sometimes take questionable shots, but when they take them, they typically get fouled. That time, not a questionable shot, but they got fouled as well. And Jones, boy, he is really strong, and he initiates the contact in there. He's so big, he turns around. He's going to make contact with those big shoulders. Follows on Jewell, his second, as Godfrey brings it down. So again, they're not... Hitting all of their free throws, to say the least, but they have a 41. Southern Illinois, 41. Evansville, 28. And they, they count the basket. I don't know about that. <laughs> Where are we? Are we in... Let's, uh, let's take another look. We this must, this must is be in Madison repeat. Square Garden. This must be the Knicks. He gets fouled. Oh, maybe that was pretty good. Little continuation there. Rich Heron can't believe it. He says, what is this? McSwain with the foul, his second. Said he's not Michael Jordan. And Chaka Chandler will try to bring Evansville back within 10. Chandler with his first basket. A freshman out of Columbus, Ohio. Really a good shooter, Chaka Chandler. Gets good spin on the ball, good rotation, good form. He's been in double figures two of his games. Jones again, and he's becoming the unstoppable force in the middle. 11 points, and it's 43-31 Southern Illinois. Up to Mahan, and a foul on Scott Schreffler. Tough call there, Scott Schreffler trying to stop that fast break, and he saw a way to stop at that time, was to draw a charge, didn't get the call. That is his second personal. And guess where we're going back? To the free throw line. To the free throw line, Mr. McSwain. And Chris Mack is returning to the ball game. And they're gonna give Dan Godfrey to rest. Godfrey with two personal fouls. They don't, uh, Jim Cruz doesn't want the big guy to pick up foul number three. And Chris Mack getting the Boo Birds out here in Southern Illinois. So, little spirit there for the uh, Saluki fans. He came into the game a 72% free throw shooter, but he can't convert on that shot. McSwain has seven points on the night. 43-31, <laughs> Southern Illinois. McSwain says, call out the picks. I just got leveled. Down to Ryan Hill, up, can't get it, back up. Still can't get it, and Jerry Jones. You can't give Jones three chances at a rebound. 
Brian Hill said, hey, I got hammered under there a couple times. Mahan. And they're banging, and this time a foul on Sterling Mahan. And Evansville will go to the one and one. We mentioned pregame that the, that the uh, Salukis really like to go to the offensive board. That time, all five players, Mike, were headed for the boards. A minute 31 on the clock. It is Southern Illinois, 43, Evansville, 31. As Chris Mack, who's coming in and shooting well for the Aces. Chris is probably the most unpopular of the Aces players here in Carbondale tonight. But like the Salukis at the other end, he can't convert. And it remains a 12-point Southern Illinois lead. Stolen by Trepler up to Hill. And Brian Hill with his 10th point. And it's 43-33, Southern Illinois, as we come down to a minute five. Great athletic move by Brian that time. Just darted past the defender, got the ball, laid it in. It was like Joe Montana to uh, Jerry Rice. <laughs> he just threw it and let him run under it. And a push-off on Ashraf Amaya. Amaya that time tried to get a little, get away with a little shove, got Mack on his hip, and uh, I think maybe if he had to shove the arm up there, he'd have just got the lob pass in there. He's got a couple inches on Mack. So again, Evansville returns to the line in the form of Chris Mack. I said Mack had been shooting well, but not from the free throw line. He's been shooting 60% on the season, but he gets this one. And it's a nine-point deficit now, staring Evansville, 43 to 34. That is Mack's first point of the night. Dave Bush checking in for Southern Illinois. Asherah Amaya going out. And he gets the pair. Down to 50 seconds, 43-35, Southern Illinois. Man, some of the aces wanted a travel. 30 seconds on the shot clock, 39 seconds on the game clock. We're gonna try and get one of the Southern Illinois coaches as they come off the court. Down to 18 on the shot clock. Dean, we'll see you later. Here we go. Down to 12. Shipley can't get it. But the Salukis get it back. Five seconds. Mahan. He puts it up. Short. And the ball goes out of bounds. It'll be retained by Evansville with seven seconds remaining. Seven seconds to go. As Chris Mack will inbound it. Southern is led by as many as 13. Six seconds, up to Schreppler, and he traveled. Four seconds on the clock, and Southern Illinois will get the ball back. That's the 12th Aces turnover of the first half. 43-35, three seconds. Mahan from way out, it's gonna be short, and that's the end of the first half. Southern Illinois, 43, Evansville, 35. Among the standouts, Sterling Mayhem with a team high 15 points for Southern Illinois. Well, on the other side, Dan Gottfried with nine, Brian Hill with 10 points. Right now, let's go to Dean Webster and the coach of the Salukis, Rich Heron. Okay, Rich, a pretty spirited first half there. What do you tell your kids? Well, we got to be a little more consistent. We haven't put them away, and we've had opportunities to do that. Evansville is a very tough and a very competitive basketball team. When you jump out 10 or 12 and go three times down without a shot, you could be up 18-20. Uh, both teams playing very hard and very aggressive, but uh, you got to take advantage of the situation. We haven't done that all. You're, half. you're still doing some things, though, that you want to do, though, right? Well, we're taking the break. We're putting the pressure defense on them. We're taking them out of the game. Uh, we just had an idea, uh, an opportunity to put the game out of sight, and we haven't done it. Now we got to come back this second half. We know Evansville's going to come back. Okay, thanks a lot, Rich. Appreciate it. We're at halftime here. The Salukis lead the Aces, and we'll be back with more halftime activities right after this. On the first day of Christmas, my 
my true love gave to me a McDonald's sausage pizza and a pepperoni. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me another sausage pizza and another pepperoni. Your tri-state area McDonald's wants to celebrate the holidays with the 12 days of pizza. Get two large pepperoni pizzas for just $12 or two large sausage pizzas for $12. On the 15th day of Christmas, my true love didn't bring another. This offer doesn't last forever. These days, it's not unusual to see farmers back in school. This place sure looks a lot smaller. Maybe you just got a lot bigger. They're learning how to apply crop protection chemicals in the safest ways possible. Remember when the coach made us all get crew cuts? <laughs> right before the prom. Some things may have changed since these farmers were in the classroom, but learning to protect the environment is something they know will never go out of style. I suppose you're going to want to borrow my nose again. Brought to you on behalf of the American farmer by the makers of Dual Herbicide. This December, things are really heating up. Heating up at every GM division. Each dealer is out to make December hotter than ever before. Hot deals like 4.8% APR GMAC financing for 48 months or cash back up to $1,000 on one of the best-selling Buicks on the American road, the Regal Coupe. Yes, this December is incredibly hot at every GM division. It's GM's hot December. Come feel the heat. It's the season for saving at Great Scott's. Chesty potato chips taste better. They're the chip of choice for lunch, supper, snack time, any time you want great potato chip flavor. Stock up for the holiday party times with Chesty potato chips in regular or ripple in one pound resealable foil bags, a dollar eighty-nine each. It's the season for saving at Great Scott. It's halftime here at Carbondale, Illinois. Southern Illinois, 43, Evansville, 35. Dean, what do you think? Well, the music is good golly, Miss Molly, and the Aces have to be saying good golly what happened in the first half. They were trailing by nine points until about midway through the first half. They got back within two points, and then all of a sudden, three technical fouls, and over the last five minutes and 13 seconds of the half, SIU outscored the University of Evansville 15 to five, and there's where you get your eight point 43-35 halftime lead. I thought Rich Heron made a good point. Uh, we had the uh, very distinct impression that Southern Illinois could have blown this thing wide open, but the Aces kept coming back. Oh, you bet. You have a 13-point lead. You better be burying someone, at least go in with that 10-point cushion, and yet they lost the lead, and I'm sure he's in there telling the players right now, hey, we had University of Evansville down. We didn't put them away. Now they start thinking they can play with us, and that's where you really get into trouble, especially at home when you let somebody like that stay around. Now the Aces are in position eight points down where anything can happen in the second half. Well, no stranger to Dean Webster and to many of our viewers, but throughout the country tonight, delighted to welcome a man who helped put Evansville on the basketball map, a Hall of Famer with the Naismith Hall of Fame, only one of two division coaches in the hall. This is Arad McCutcheon. Mac, nice to have you with us always. Your impressions of this first half. Well, I, I'm very impressed with the Aces in spite of some uh, unfortunate things that have happened out there. The, the pluses are this. We have gotten the ball to the basket, but we've missed it. We've got to make those bunnies down underneath. And if only three or four of those fall in, we got a tie ball game. And many of them are the kind we make all the time. Also, they were fouled quite a little on those, and I'm not, I'm not clear why uh, they don't call a foul when, they, when we do foul and miss them under the basket. Those have been missed. The Aces have been marvelous on the defensive board. They've worked those very well. So uh, we have controlled those, and if we can get a few of them to fall in and get the whistle to, to uh, reward us when we are fouled, I think we'll win the ball game. One of the uh, one of the greatest rivalries in the Midwest is Southern Illinois and U of E. Let's go back. This is the 25th anniversary, perhaps the greatest three games between these two schools, 1964-65. This man had Jerry Sloan and another great time. Larry Humes on that club, right? Yes. Walt Frazier was on Southern Illinois. Three games decided by five points. This new arena in 1964 and 65, they'd won 12 in a row till you came to town. What happened? Well, uh, it was one of those great things. They came to town there first, and if my memory is right, we were 23 to 8 behind one time there and won the game in a great finish with Jerry Sloan out of the game and Larry Humes making the shot with four seconds to go that everybody that was around remembers that. 81-80, I think. Uh -huh, I think that was it. Coming back over here again, they surprised me with a zone defense that they hadn't used before. 
and we did not work well against it at first, but finally did, and stayed even was about all we could. And it again was just an even ball game, one point difference. And then the third game was for the national for the title, national right? National title. And in that one, it got even closer in a sense. It was overtime, and with one second to go in the overtime, we led by one point. Jerry Sloan was fouled, so we poured it on, so to speak. We beat him three points then. <laughs> I've had the privilege of sitting by you. One final thing, Mac, you've been out of the game several years. What's the biggest difference from the time you coached Evansville? Well, I'm sure we have better athletes, fa uh, faster athletes, and uh, bigger in that they can go to the basket uh, and dunk it from farther out. And we had people could dunk, but not from starting from 15 feet and get it done. And I don't know how to coach defense against that. I don't know about that. I'm sure you, you do very well. Arad McCutcheon, as always, thank you. We're coming back here to the SIU Arena with more halftime activity. But right now, the score, Southern Illinois, 43, Evansville, 35. We'll be right back. And good evening. I'm David James with this news update. Governor Bayh says he sees a no need for an audit of the Indiana lottery revenues, despite the resignation of lottery director Jack Crawford. The governor is also taking heat for not outlining the reasons behind Crawford's sudden resignation. There are reports that Crawford had been sexually harassing a member of his lottery staff. Here's what the governor had to say about that criticism. The uh, unfortunate uh, personal circumstances. And I simply don't think that it's appropriate for me uh, to speculate publicly in a, in a manner more suitable for the National Enquirer about things that uh, involve uh, his personal life uh, that are potentially embarrassing uh, to his family or to others uh, and uh, about which there is some doubt. Uh, that's just not appropriate for me to do as governor. Republicans have chastised the Bayh administration for not having a thorough background check of key appointees like Crawford. Bayh's chief of staff labeled such comments cheap shots. In Tennessee, a state official linked to a federal probe of bingo gambling and public corruption has tried to kill himself. Police say Tennessee Secretary of State Gentry Cromwell put a 38 caliber revolver in his mouth and pulled the trigger. Cromwell is listed in critical condition. Doctors removed brain tissue and the bullet after a five-hour surgery. I'll have details tonight on Newswatch at 10. Who's your millionaire? Saturdays at 6.30, only on WFIE-TV, Channel 14. 43-35 here at the SIU Arena in Southern Illinois leading the University of Evansville. And with me is uh, the athletic director, Jim Hart. You probably remember this guy. He used to uh, throw all kinds of touchdown passes to the St. Louis Cardinals. Jim, welcome. Thank you. It's good to uh, welcome to you all here. <laughs> well, it's a great first half, and you've got to really be proud of Rich Heron and this team he's put together. Oh, hey, we are proud. They have started off really well, and, uh, of course, the first half today is uh, really good. I guess I, I really hasn't been such a nice welcome for you all in the first half anymore. Anyway, but I got a feeling that, that the Aces will probably come back and make a heck of a ball game right down to the wire. Are all Southern Illinois uh, programs this good and doing this well? Well, I wish that were the case. Uh, we started out on a rotten note with football, but we, uh, we've got a good football coach and a good staff, and I think uh, given some time, Bob Smith will put together a fine football team. But uh, yes, with, the, with regard to the rest of the sports, yeah, we, uh, we're pretty competitive right down the wire. Our swimming team is, is uh, national, nationally recognized, and uh, so we're, yeah, we're doing pretty well. You still enjoying your work? Oh, very much so. It's, uh, it's totally different from anything I've ever done before, and uh, something new every day. There's no one day like the last. And out of uh, maybe outside of some Chicago Bears fans, a lot of people maybe don't know that you go back and where you kind of moonlight a little bit on the weekends doing the Chicago Bears games. Uh, it's got to be a strange situation up in Chicago right now. Well, it is strange. When I, I started with them in 1985, right after I, my last year of playing, and lo and behold, they go to the Super Bowl the first year. So I'm thinking, hey, this is easy work. <laughs> they well, you broadcasters, boy, that's not, there's nothing to this. And all of a sudden, they've kind of slid here in the, in the last year, and uh, very, very rapidly. When you think of just, uh, they go from five uh, consecutive uh, 
division championships to all of a sudden being way out of it here with uh, with two games to go. Now you still have a pretty good pulse on the NFL. Who's going to win it all? Oh. <laughs> uh, well, judging by last night's uh, performance of San Francisco, how can you count them out again? Uh, they are they are by far the, uh, the the best in the league, I think. Okay. But anything can happen. You know that. That's right. Jim, thanks for stopping you by. Bet. I appreciate it. Boy, so in Illinois, uh, got to watch them here in the second half. Well, I'm, I'm going to keep my eye on the Aces, too. <laughs> They're too good to keep down. All right. Thanks a lot. We're at halftime here at the SIU Arena. 43-35, Southern Illinois leading the University of Evansville. Mike? Thank you, Dean. Incidentally, the Aces led only one time in the ballgame, two to nothing. But ever since then, it has been Southern leading and in the statistical department. We'll check the halftime stats and come back for the start of the second half. But first, listen to this. Tonight's game is being brought to you in part by Old National Bank, your bank for life. By Kite Home Center, where they help you help yourself. By Deaconess Hospital. And by Unical. Mr. Scrooge hey. has been seeing more ghosts than usual this year. They are after the new stuffing. Stuffing. It's the five-piece holiday meal deal from Kentucky Fried Chicken with two buttermilk biscuits and that delicious new stuffing for just $4.99. It's meant for two. More ghosts? We brought a ten-piece holiday meal with four buttermilk biscuits and more stuffing for just $9.99. You have money up there? Get the five- or ten-piece holiday meal deal at Kentucky Fried Chicken today. When you started driving, you pretended your car was real. Now you wish a real car gave you as little trouble as that old soapbox. Unical can't promise that, but we can offer an unleaded gasoline that can give you a smoother ride, our unleaded premium. Fill her up. Sure, Murph, give us the best you got. And check the oil, too. Will that be cash or credit, gentlemen? <laughs> You don't expect your bank to make mistakes on your checking account. The real difference in banks is how they respond when they do. At Old National, we don't like mistakes. So if we ever slip up on your account, we'll put our money where our mouth is and pay you for it in hard cash. Guaranteed. Right, Kathy? Right. Check where quality service from qualified people is our way of life. Guaranteed. Your bank for life. Old National. Mom, more presents for the kids? Oh, it's just a few things. <laughs> this Christmas, Discover Hill's everyday low prices on every item we carry, from the big gifts to the stocking stuffers. When you add it all up, you'll see the difference Hill's everyday low prices can make. MasterCard and Visa now accepted. Did you buy out the whole store? No, I'll have some for the other grandmothers. We're a different kind of discount store, and the proof is in the price. Check us out. As the teams return to the floor, Dean, let's look at the halftime stats. Well, as you can see right there, the uh, the Aces shooting 13 of 27, 48%, and uh, 14 of 34, only 41% for Southern Illinois. So the Aces with an advantage there, but uh, Southern Illinois with seven more shots. Free throws, 17 to seven taken uh, in favor of Southern Illinois. They've hit 10, the Aces have hit six. Rebounds, uh, 16 to 13, actually in favor of Evansville. And uh, turnovers, the Aces have committed 12, and Southern Illinois has committed 7. As far as individual scores for the Aces, Brian Hill came off the bench about midway through the uh, first half, and he's the Aces' second-leading scorer, and he got on the board in a hurry and got in there often. 10 points for Brian. Godfrey had 9 points basically early. He also has 4 rebounds. Mahan with an excellent first half for Southern Illinois. He has 15. Jones with 11. And uh, Freddie McSwain, he got hot early, and he's been dishing in the points, too. So the, the Aces and the Salukis ready to go at it here in the second half. Again, Southern Illinois in with a 5-0 record. The Evansville Aces are 3-4. They will be returning to Evansville to play Murray State on Saturday. The Salukis, on the other hand, will entertain St. Louis, another Midwestern Collegiate Conference team, on Friday night here at the SIU Arena. 
telecast of Evans University of Evansville basketball is an exclusive telecast of WFIE TV and Creative Sports and may not be rebroadcast in whole or in part without the prior written consent of WFIE TV Incorporated. Again, Mike Blake along with Dean Webster on a cold night outside in frigid southern Illinois in Carbondale, but it's heating up as always when Evansville and Southern Illinois get together on the inside in a basketball arena. The ace is about ready to break the huddle. They have their work cut out for them. Trailing 43 to 35 to their longtime rival, Southern Illinois, which leads this series, depending on which release you believe. <laughs> they, they lead it either 39-31, 38-32, or 37-33. The only thing we're sure of is this is the 71st meeting. And they lead it. Chris Mack will inbound the ball for the Purple Aces. In the home whites, Southern Illinois, the Salukis. The Aces led at 2-0. That was their only lead. Southern Illinois led the rest of the half, led by as many as 13. They lead it by eight as we go to the second half. Dan Godfrey playing with two fouls as Hill tries to go baseline. Loses the ball. There's the man that had the great first half, Mahan. This is out to McSwain, into Jones. Batted around. Godfrey trying to control it, controlled by Freddie McSwain. Down to Jones again. He draws a crowd and goes out of bounds. The Aces with 12 turnovers in the first half. That should be your total more like for the game. They've already picked up another one, so they've got 13 now as they clear it to Brian Hill. 